So here I'll introduce creating variables, and then I'll talk about the various data types in JavaScript. So in JavaScript, you can create a variable by using the var keyword. It's all going to be lowercase. And then you give your, your variable a name. Typically, you want to create a simple name. Uh, it's going to be all one word. So for example, let's say that I wanted to keep track of what state a person is from or where they're, or where they're currently residing. So I'll say user state as that variable name. And at this time, I'll go ahead and close this out. So this will be my JavaScript statement right here on line one. Now, when you create a variable, you can uh, give it a underscore at the beginning. You could give it a dollar sign at the beginning, although typically you don't want to do that because you don't want it to interfere with libraries such as jQuery, um, which also use that naming convention. So just having text in, uh, as the first part of the name is what you're typically going to do. Remember that it needs to be one word. So if you need a descriptor that will maybe have multiple words in the description, such as this here, then you don't have a space. But to make it so it's easier to read, you can use camel case syntax. So for the second part of the, of the, of the word, you have an uppercase letter, as I'm showing here on line one. Now you can end with a number. So you could say user state 12. Uh, you could end with a underscore. Okay. But you don't want to start with a number, so you would never do that. That would be an error. Uh, the other thing to note is that this is going to be case sensitive. So if I were to come down here and on line three, say user state, user state equals um, Florida, let's do that, then that's actually the same. But if I have an uppercase U and a lowercase s, then that's a different variable. So uh, just note that JavaScript is case sensitive. It's pretty easy going about most things, but in that, in that regard, you want to be um, you want to be careful. I can declare the content uh, of my variable on line one. So when I declare the variable, I can then load the data into the variable. So I could say Florida, and then close that out. And now user state is equal to Florida. Or you can declare your variables. Lots of times people will want to declare multiple variables on one line are uh, at, the, at the top of their document. Actually, that is another thing to mention, is that you can declare variables on one line. So I could have a comma here. And now I could say um, var user state. I could say user um, name. And I could say uh, user age. And that would be OK to do that. And that would declare multiple variables on one line. Um, you could also do it this way, semicolon, and then use the var keyword and new username, and then do var user age. Okay, those are all fine ways to do it. I'm going to actually declare it on multiple lines, var user age, just because it's easier to, to read in this case. User, let's do name. Okay, so. <clears throat> Now what you can do is you want to load data into the variables. Because by default, if you do an alert on user state, you will get an undefined. And that just means it doesn't hold any data at this time. You'll see undefined actually um, is an error that will occur a lot for you. And if you aren't naming your variables correctly, or if, if, there's, if there's some if there's some reason why you aren't loading data into a variable and you maybe should be, then you'll do. Then you might do an a, te a test on your program, and then you'll have in the console.log you'll have undefined or as an alert. Okay. The last thing I'll show here is loading the data and then um, adding this together for for uh, for our output. So let's say that I want to declare this now. I say user state equals Oregon. And then uh, user age equals 34. Uh, <clears throat> so my user is from Oregon. They're 34 years old. The next thing I'll, I, I'll go over here is just that line 5 is a string. Uh, strings are going to be when you have quotes around your content. And it will treat it essentially as text. Now you can have single quote or double quote. Either one of those are permissible. There we go. 
there's going to be various reasons why you'd want to use a single or double quote, as we'll get into later. But at this time, you could use either one. It would be fine. It would treat it the same way. So that's a string on line five. On line six, this is a number. So the number data type is going to be for if you're having floating point or integer. Uh, it'll treat it under the same data type. So maybe my user is 34 and a half. That's still going to be considered a number in JavaScript. The other data type in JavaScript is going to be a Boolean. So let's say I had a variable up here for user status to find out maybe if, if they're a resident of the state. So if you're a resident, it's really going to be true or false, yes or no. So I would say user status equals true in this case. Okay. So now I have a number data type, I have a string data type, and I have a Boolean. There's also an object data type, which we'll get into a little bit later. We've talked about undefined as being when you don't have any content within a variable. The other, um, uh, the other values are going to be null that we'll talk about later. Nulls when it also doesn't have in any data. Well, actually, null itself is data, so we'll talk about how that's different than undefined uh, a little bit later. And then there's nan. We'll get into that a little bit later as well. But basically, that is just going to be if you if it if it is not a number. Like let's say you're trying to add the number five plus the word ten. Like let's say you spelled it T E N and you wanted to add T E N plus five, then that would result in not a number. We'll see an example of that later. Okay, so this was how to declare our variables in, in JavaScript, the basic naming conventions, as well as taking a look at the data types, uh, a really basic level.